Welcome back. In this presentation, we're going to focus on purchase orders. Um, so what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to um, jump over to our projects by clicking on the logo menu and going to project management. From here, we'll see a listing of all the projects we're working on. We'll select the project we want to add the purchase order for. We'll just select anyone here. And then we have a listing here on this, this bottom ribbon. We can see that we have POs as one of the smart buttons here on our ribbon. So by clicking on this item, it's going to show me a listing of all of the purchase orders that I have for this current project, High Point, that we're looking at. So I'm going to click on it. There are three purchase orders that we have here. And we can see that there's two of them that are in draft mode one of them that's been canceled. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create a new purchase order for this, for this job here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And this is gonna bring up a blank purchase order screen. So I can give it just a title. Let's just call this a test purchase order. I'm gonna select who the vendor is. And this would be a listing of all of the contacts that I have in the system but with the tag or the vendor selected. So we're only gonna show vendors here. And I'll just select, uh, we'll select Hindsight as the vendor. And then I can put in the vendor's reference number or their PO number, and we'll just make something up. Here's my purchase order date and time. If I need to get this purchase order approved, then I could click on the approval and I could select who would be the approver if I did that, then I wouldn't have the ability to actually approve this and it would be routed off to the person that needed to approve it and we could not move forward until it was actually approved. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uncheck that and say that this one does not need to be approved, nor are we tracking retention on this. Um, the company here, if we're dealing with multiple companies in our 2020 uh, system, then we could select the company that we're working with here. Now, right now, we're going to go through and we're going to add in all of the different um, items that are going to be on this purchase order. So this is going to look to our 2020 database and look to our item master file. Now, item master file is used for a lot of things. It's used for uh, all of the items that we put on our estimates, all the items we put on our proposals and our contracts. Uh, we're even utilizing that uh, some for our subcontracts and here for our purchase orders. So when I go and I hit add an item, if we have items that we've said to be available for a purchase order, they'll show up. If we have not, then there won't be any available in the dropdown. So here you can see we have one item that's been selected, but this isn't the item that we need to show on our purchase order. We need to create a new one. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and edit, and this is gonna open up the screen for me to add a new item. And I'm gonna put in Soho White 6x6. Okay, the vendor's reference number for this I can put in. I can put in barcodes. If I want to assign this to a specific division, you know, somewhere on my division list and subdivisions and categories, I can put in right here what the sell price is and the cost is, the unit of measure. All of these items we're gonna store into the database. So if we use this item, the Soho White 6x6 again, then we'll be able to automatically have these values will automatically be pulled into the next time that we use it. The key to making it show up on a purchase order is the product type. So it needs to be a consumable item. It needs to be an item that we are going to purchase and use. <clears throat> if we look at the other options here, we have a service item and then we have a stockable product. So something for inventory. But typically for our purchase orders, we're gonna use the consumable item right here. So we're gonna mark that as consumable. And then we're gonna go ahead and save this. So we did not fill in any of the details here. Oh, we need to give it a, a number. So we'll just call it Soho W6. And save it. <clears throat> we didn't give it a cost amount 
or a price amount or a unit of measure. We left the unit of measure uh, as the default unit. So now when we look at this, it's gone and it's added this item into the database. So if I click the drop down, I'll see two items now. The first one, the concrete pipe, and now the Soho White 6x6. So now I can just simply go through and fill out the details. I can assign this to a specific part on my project. This is a listing of my budget accounts on the project. You know, so if I went to woods, here's my wood framing material, and I'm gonna assign this to that account. Um, I'm gonna go through and say that we need two of these, and the unit price is gonna be 108.55. And if we need to put in taxes or set up those taxes, we can do that here. Um, there might be a shipping and handling charge. So maybe we wanna add in a shipping and a handling charge as well, so let's create that. Let's call this shipping and handling. Spell it better than I knew. Again, we're gonna create a consumable item. Let's call it ship. Well, let's keep them all lowercase, ship. And again, everything, we'll just call this a lump sum amount. So we'll just change this to a lump sum. <clears throat> and we'll save it. So now I have the ability to put in a shipping and handling a charge. I can also cost this shipping and handling to the wood framing budget account. I can say, you know, we have a lump sum shipping of handling of 1250. And I'm just gonna click off of that. And now I have my two items on there, so I can see that I have a total purchase order of $229.60. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this up here in the top left corner, hit save, and I've added in a new purchase order into the system. I could then print this purchase order off, so if we go to the print, we can print it off, we can see our pre-order checklist or a material tracking slip. And that's how we enter our purchase orders. So you may have other things. You may have things like taxes. Let's, let's go ahead and edit this. When you're editing, when you're putting in your taxes, it's possible that you're gonna have to set up some of your taxes ahead of time. So again, we're just gonna wanna click on that, click create and edit. It will open up our tax. We're gonna click our create our taxes, who's our tax authority. There may be a little bit of setup that we need to do as we're doing this for the first couple of times. So we'll be able to use this newly created tax record for other purchases going forward. So hopefully that was helpful. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. We're always happy to help. Um, shoot us an email, give us a call. Uh, we hope that you'll continue to watch these little YouTube videos and that they're helpful. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the next video presentation.